Coming up, booming sound for the low, low price of $2,000, an SSD that's savage, and the Pebble Time gets its time again. You've got to watch before you buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Before You Buy is brought to you by FreshBooks, the super simple cloud accounting and invoicing solution designed to help small business owners save time billing and get paid faster. Try it free at FreshBooks.com slash BYB. And by the Ring Video Doorbell. With Ring, you can see and talk to anyone at your door from anywhere in the world using your smartphone. It's like caller ID for your home. Get $10 off the Ring Video Doorbell when you go to ring.com slash before you buy. Hey, and welcome to Before You Buy. It's Twitch product review show where we take the latest gadgets and gizmos that we get here to the Brick House in Petaluma and we give them to the members of the Twitch staff, our hosts, our engineers, the people who can give you the best, most honest review possible. Uh, we are starting off with something that, uh, well, is interesting. If you are an audiophile, and I mean a true audiophile, one who accepts no compromise in the quality of your sound, if that's you, and maybe you want to take a look at the Devialle Phantom Speaker. Hey, it's Miriam with Before You Buy, and what we have here, this egg in front of me, is the Devialle Phantom. Devialle is a French audio manufacturer. They make really high-end audio gear, like we're talking 30,000 US dollar amplifiers. And then one day they came out with this egg, and I think it was a few months back, and this egg is the Phantom. And the Phantom is a single speaker that um, is super high quality, wireless, uh, also wired if you want, and um, basically takes all of their know-how in making super high-end amplifiers and putting it into basically a wireless speaker, a really high-end wireless speaker for your home. So you can use this by itself, standalone over Wi-Fi, connect it to a phone or a or a PC or Mac. Um, it supports iOS, Android, Windows, and OS X. Or you can plug an optical toss link in the back here where the cables are. Um, you can also connect it by Ethernet. That's how we've got it set up because here in the studio, the wireless is a little wonky. But um, it has Bluetooth as well, but Bluetooth is not currently enabled in software. And trust me, Bluetooth is probably not high quality enough to make, to give this thing justice. So as you can see here, this is a good shot. You can see in the middle here is a tweeter. And around here, this is actually the medium speaker. It moves. It's not, uh, it's not fixed. This is actually a speaker. And on both sides here, you have the bass speakers, and these are in a hermetically sealed enclosure, and they actually move outwards when music plays. Let me show you this right now. Um, if I hit play, you can see the speakers move. So this is Daft Punk that I was just playing back directly from my phone as a FLAC file, really high quality audio. Now the other thing to keep in mind is to really get make the best out of this product, you ideally need to buy two of them and uh, buy the, uh, the, the, the basically the hub that they have called the Dialog. And the Dialog is basically looks like a little router and it lets you synchronize multiple ones of these wirelessly. So you can have a stereo setup, maybe uh, another one mono in another room or another stereo setup in another room. It does multi-room up to 24 phantoms. And so you're gonna say like, how, what are we talking about price-wise here? I mean, obviously their amps are 30K. This is 2000, this particular model is kind of their base model, 750 watt in one speaker. And then they have a, get this 3000, uh, 3000 uh, 3, watt speaker that costs uh, a whopping uh, $2,400. And uh, you know, I'll just quickly show you um, here, there is this app that comes, as I said, on the phone. It lets you create playlists, and you can actually create, uh, it's cool, because you can, I'm running on my Nexus 6 right now, you can create cooperative playlists. So 
a collaborative playlist. So if you have multiple people in the same room using the same app and with different music on their phones, you can create a playlist of all the music and play it in the order. You can add and remove. So um, that's actually really quite cool. There's this kind of social collaborative aspect to people playing music on this device. Um, other than that, really, really what, this, uh, what this UI lets you do is select music that's on your phone uh, and play it directly wirelessly on the device. It also supports some streaming services like Tidal. Uh, it doesn't support too many of them yet, uh, and they're going to add more. But that's kind of one of the drawbacks, actually, I think, is that uh, this app is really not that great. It does support collaborative playlists, which is cool, but the app itself needs a bit of work. Uh, the setup process can be a little painful through this app. And uh, again, if you want to play a YouTube video, the sound's not going to come out of this. It has to all go through their app. So uh, same with a Mac, for example. If you install their app on a Mac, only their app can play music. Uh, so if you're playing uh, some kind of weird favorite player like VLC and you want to play audio from that, you can't. Uh, you have to connect via the optical connection either on the back of one speaker or the back of the dialog, which is a little router that they um, provide that you should use for when you have two or three or four of these. Um, so cons and pros, would you buy, should you buy? That's what you came here for. Let me fill you in. Pros, best sound quality ever. But the caveat is you need to. If you're at that level of audio that you believe this is you know, the kind of quality you want, you really need two of these in your house. Uh, so that adds a cost because it's 2000 each plus you need the $500 dialog wireless um, controller. So that's $4,500, right? Um, that's a lot of money. So that's big con for a lot of people. The other thing is the app really needs, um, the, other, the app needs a lot of work. This, this uh, iOS and Android app is just, uh, just not good enough. And as I said, you need to connect optically to really be able to listen to any sound sources. Uh, so pro is sound quality, and you know it's beautiful. I actually think as some people are going to argue. I don't know if you can sh show the front of it again, but I think it's really beautiful. Uh, as you can see, it's it's not too big. It's a bit heavy, but great design, great sound quality. Uh, but again, price is an issue for a lot of people, and uh, the app setup a lot of software needs a lot of work the fact bluetooth isn't enabled by default uh, another thing to bring up as another con i guess is no airplay or chromecast support out of the box i'm it's going to come their app needs to support it they say it will remember they haven't really started shipping these they're just basically setting themselves up in the u.s right now so should you buy it or not i'm going to give it a try if um if you know you are not a baller living and buying a house in San Francisco and not thinking twice, if however you have the money, it is an absolute buy. Like you can't go wrong. This is future proof. It's software based. A lot of it can be upgraded. The software is only going to improve. Uh, Devialet is known for upgrading their amps for years and years. Some of their amps are now ten years old and are still getting firmware upgrades. So you're not going to be left in the dust. So. I would say try if your budget doesn't really let you go crazy and buy if you can totally afford it, if you're a baller, if you're you know, driving around a Bentley every day. But buy two. Do not buy one of these. It's just not going to be worth your while. So I hope this was informative. This is Miriam with Before You Buy. And this here, this egg in front of me is the Diviale Phantom. And it's a try for the Diviale Phantom speaker from Miriam Joar. Now. Folks, I know $2,000 sounds like an awful lot of cash, but remember, this is supposed to replace, say, a $10,000, $20,000 system. Oh, if that is what you're looking for. And if you do have a little bit of spare cash lying around and you want a high-quality sound system, Miriam says this might be worth you taking a look. Uh, when we come back, we're going to bring you off-site. That's right, we're going to bring you to San Francisco one last time to take a look at, uh, well, something that we found in the area. But before we do that, let's go ahead and thank the first sponsor of this episode of Before You Buy, and it's FreshBooks. Now, what is FreshBooks? Oh, just the easiest way for you to run your business. Oh, if you do run your own small business, maybe your little enterprise, a startup, you know that one of the most troublesome pieces is the fact that you have to take care of billing your expenses, your invoices. And if you are a private contractor, invoicing can be a major problem. I can't tell you how many times I actually let a billing cycle lapse without billing 
because I forgot about it, or it, it fell through the cracks, or it fell off of my Excel spreadsheet. Well, you don't get any of that with FreshBooks. They take care of where every number needs to go, and they make sure that you get an easy to understand statement at the end of each month. They'll take care of the invoicing, they'll take care of the warning messages, they'll take care of you getting paid, you just focus on the business you're trying to build. Now, it is an invoicing solution, but it's also something that you'll use, like five million other people, just to keep your business running smoothly. Now, they want you to try it free for 30 days, and we want you to try that too. It's easy to use, it's designed specifically for people who want to focus on their work rather than the paperwork, and help at FreshBooks is free forever. So if you've got a question about how it works or how it runs or how it can best help you, make sure to go to freshbooks.com slash BYB. That's right, getting started is simple and it's totally free for 30 days with no obligation. Just go to freshbooks.com slash BYB, freshbooks.com slash BYB. And don't forget to enter before you buy in the how did you hear about us section. Start your 30 day free trial today and we thank FreshBooks for their support of before you buy. Uh, we're going to go on location one last time to San Francisco, Mobile Focus 2015. We spoke to the folks at Huawei and, uh, well, they think eight inches is just about right. Hi, Father Robert Ballister, the digital Jesuit, and this is an eight inch phone. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Actually, I'm not, but we'll talk about that later. I'm actually here with Jack Borg for a first look at the Snap 2, an entry level Android phone. Sure. The, so the Snap 2 is our our newest unlock device that we're launching in the US. Um, it's a five inch HD screen. It has a 1.2 gig uh, quad core processor, a gig of RAM, eight gigs of ROM built in for uh, user memory, uh, five megapixel autofocus with a flash on the back, a two megapixel on the front. And um, the best part of it is unlocked and works on all US GSM LTE carriers. So you're going to take your SIM card out of any other L uh, GSM carrier phone you have, pop it in here, and you're ready to go. Retails for $179 um, unlocked. OK, so that's, that's entry level. And actually, it's quite snappy. I had a chance to play with it. With that quad core processor, it, you don't feel really that it's a low end phone. Now, I was saying that, I was just kidding that this is an eight inch phone. but. No, no, really, this actually is an 8-inch Tell me about this. It's a tablet, but you've actually enabled it to be used as a phone. Yes, absolutely. So this is our MediaPad T18. So it is an 8-inch. It's a 720p screen, so HD screen. Um, it does have a SIM card slot built into it. So you can take, as I said with the other device, you can put your SIM card right in this and have uh, your full voice and data capabilities on the phone. So you could actually hold it up to your face like you just did and make a phone call or use it with Bluetooth. Um, the specs are very similar to the Snap 2. It's a 1.2 gig quad core processor, a gig of RAM, 8 gigs of user memory, uh, 5 megapixel camera on the back, and a 2 on the front. So very similar. This one retails for $189 unlocked. Now I can already tell you what the tech press is going to say. It's stupid. That's ridiculous. No one's going to hold a phone this size up at the side of their head. Of course, that's the same thing that they said about the Note, the original big phone, and pretty much every big phone after that. So uh, again, big question, pricing and availability. This is available right now on GetHuawei.com, 189. There you go. I'm Father Robert Ballos here. And uh, can you hear me now? Now, I know a lot of people are going to look at that phone and say, that's just too big. There's no way I would ever use something that large. Holding that up next to your head makes it look a little ridiculous. But remember, not too long ago, we thought phones like the Note 2 and even the early Galaxies were way too big. I mean, a 4-inch screen, a 5-inch screen, a 5.5-inch screen, God forbid, a 6-inch screen. So maybe, just maybe, a monster screen is in the future for you. Uh, let's switch things up a little bit, move away from phones, and maybe to something you might connect to a phone. Uh, I want to talk about a subject that is near and dear to the hearts of many people, specifically to the people who are parents. Uh, your kids at some point are going to want to start consuming multimedia content, which means they're going to need a set of headphones. Uh, you could give them adult headphones, but that's silly. You want something that's specifically designed for them, for their needs, for their ears which is why we went over to Megan Maroney and we asked her kindly if she wouldn't mind taking a look at the Puro Sound Labs kids' headphones. I am Megan Maroney and I host i5 for the iPhone, iOS Today, and Tech News Tonight. And I am going to review the Puro Studio Grade kids' wireless headphones. 
The major selling point of these Bluetooth headphones is that they feature Puro's trademarked healthy ears volume limiting ear protection up to 85 decibels. And they claim to do this without compromising sound. Because whether they're listening to Taylor Swift, Stampy's Minecraft videos, or playing Halo, kids like to turn the sound up. And if you want to protect their little ears from damage without sacrificing sound, Puro is a good choice. Now, the big question I have is do kids really need studio sound quality? Here's what you get in the box. Headphones that look and feel good, a micro USB charger with a wall plug. Puro promises 18 hours of battery life with 200 hours of standby. I didn't check this claim with a stopwatch, but I can tell you that my kids left them on for a long time without charging them, and we never had a problem. Plus, it's not a proprietary charging cable, and let's face it, none of us stray too far from a micro USB charging cable these days. The sound is great. It's studio grade. It's excellent for blocking out background noise, which makes watching the Lego movie on a plane easier than ever. Here are the pros. They're stylish looking. They come in two colors, white and silver, like these ones, or tan and gold. And then they don't look like kid headphones, so they're great even into the teen years. Also, they're adjustable, so there's room to grow. They're easy to pair with a tablet or a phone. The headphones come with a wall plug, which is nice. A lot of product products are skimping on that these days, and they're only giving us the USB. The built-in controls are easy to use. Plus, there's a money-back guarantee. They'll either give you your money back or they'll replace them altogether. Here are the cons. The price is $79.99. Now, that's a lot to spend on something you're going to hand over to a kid, especially something that's designed for travel. At the same time, these are cheaper than other wireless headphones for kids or adults that I've seen. Some headphones I've tried include a case, like a hard case for protection, and these don't. They just include a regular sort of drawstring bag. And my big question is still there. Do kids need Bluetooth headphones? Do they need studio-grade Bluetooth headphones? There's no cons in the product itself, just whether or not you need to spend $79 uh, on Bluetooth headphones for your kit. So if you do have $79.99 to spend on a Bluetooth set of headphones for your kids, then I would definitely give these a buy. I am Megan Maroney, and that was my review of the Puro Bluetooth headset for kids. And it's a buy from Megan Maroney for the Puros Sound Labs Kids headphones. Now, I got to say, when I first saw these things, I thought it was a little bit of a scam, but it actually makes sense. If you've got little people, you don't want to give them adult headphones. Adult headphones are designed for our anatomy, our physiology. You want to protect the ears of your youngins as they're growing up. So uh, that could be $80 well spent. Now, coming up next, we're going to be taking a look at a redemption. That's right. We've got the Pebble Time. It was a watch that Megan Maroney took a look at a while back. It got a lukewarm reception for iPhone users because it's just not designed for them. So we gave it to Jason Howell to take a look at what he thought from the Android perspective. But before we do that, let's go ahead and take another break to thank the second sponsor of this episode of Before You Buy, and it's Ring, the Ring Video Doorbell. Now, what is the Ring Video Doorbell? Quite simply, it's caller ID for your home. This is the kit. This is what you would get if you actually buy it. Uh, what I like about this is it's full service. They give you everything you need to get this installed into your home, from the drill bit to the screws to the tool, even the balance so you can make sure it goes in level. This is the Ring Video Doorbell. And it sounds just like a doorbell. If someone comes up and presses a button, it's going to ring outside as well as inside. But the magic comes in the unit itself. If I tie this into house power, I can, I can power it directly off of the, the cables that were giving power to the doorbell. But I also have the option of just charging with a micro USB connector this little lithium ion battery inside, which will power the Ring Video Doorbell for up to a year. This connects to your Wi-Fi system, and then it's magic. It has a camera and a motion sensor, which means I can determine when I get a notification, when someone walks into my front courtyard or walks by my door, or I could get notified every time someone presses the bell. Uh, this is not just a doorbell, folks. This is peace of mind. I, well, I feel kind of strongly about this because I use the Ring Video Doorbell for my parents. This is how it works. When someone rings the bell, you're going to get a little notification. Now, the cool thing is if you subscribe to the service, which is just nothing, it's something like, oh, it's less than a latte a month. I think that's what they normally say. Uh, it lets me see all the videos later on. I can store them. I can download them to my phone so I can see who actually came up to the door, which means if someone is scouting out my parents' home, if someone keeps coming by the front door, if someone knocks and then peeks in the window and then just stealthily walks away, I can know something's up. And, you know, 
they're at that age where I really want to take care of them. They took care of me. I want to make sure that they stay safe. And that's really what the Ring video doorbell is all about. Now see why the editors at CES called it one of the top gadgets of 2014. This is something that you're going to want to have. And I know because it's something that I use. Now, if you are, and I know you are, curious about how this thing works, you got to visit Ring. Just go to ring.com. In fact, go to ring.com slash before you buy, and they're going to give you $10 off the normal price of $199. That's right. Protect your home and have peace of mind with Ring. Go to ring.com slash before you buy. Ring.com slash before you buy. And we thank Ring for their support of Before You Buy. Now we're going to go ahead and head back into Pebble Time territory. Jason Howell has everything we need to know about the Pebble Time for the Android user. Hey, what's up? I'm Jason Howell, and I'm here to spend just a little bit of time with this. This is the Pebble Time smartwatch. Megan Maroney already did a full review of this watch a few episodes back, but we thought it might be kind of interesting, since I'm the Android guy around here, to compare the Pebble Watch, uh, the Pebble Time watch, to the Android Wear watch that I'm so used to using. Of course, it's kind of in a strange state right now because it the watch band broke, but that won't stop this review. So I'm going to compare them... Uh, you know, side by side from the perspective of an Android user. Let's start with the looks here. Just looking at the Pebble Time, it kind of, I don't know, the first thing that struck me is that it feels like a toy, especially in comparison to the competition. The bezel's pretty wide. It just kind of looks like an old school retro uh, watch that you might find in the 80s or something. Android Wear, on the other hand, has plenty of options. Some of them also look like toys, but some look pretty refined in comparison. So I suppose I'd have to kind of side with Android Wear in that regard. Uh, as for design itself, Pebble Time, you'll see on the side here, has hardware buttons. It uses a hardware button approach for navigation. There is no touchscreen uh, interface here. And it also has a proprietary charging port on the back, though it does have a magnetic snap-in, so that's pretty nice. Android Wear, on the other hand, is fully touchscreen. And uh, that's just how you operate it, except for this side button here that turns the screen on or off. And it also has wireless as well as wired charging port options, depending on the watch that you have. Some of those are proprietary as well. Uh, winner here, I, I suppose I'd have to side with Wear, but many love the hardware approach of Pebble Time. So I think this is kind of a tie as far as which direction to go. Display. Okay, so Pebble Time display is actually pretty serviceable. It totally grew on me over extended use. I think initially when I saw it, I kind of balked at it because it's a little bit lower res, kind of feels a little pixelated at times, but it really grew on me. It has an old school retro vibe that totally works. It's color ink display. Might not be super sharp, but its benefits are definitely undeniable, and I'm going to talk about that in in a second. Android Wear, on the other hand, has sharp display options using well more traditional screen technologies. It also has rounded and square display options, so you have a little bit more to choose from. Overall, Android Wear just has options, but I, I couldn't really pick a winner here because I actually really like both types pretty equally, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a tie. I hope that's not a cop-out. Uh, as for utility, Pebble Time is great for notification triage. Really, that's what I use a smartphone for, uh, managing my notifications as they come through. Pebble Time also uses a timeline approach for keeping things productive, so you can go forward or backwards in time, and I kind of like that. Pebble Time also has its own app store for extending functionality with apps on the phone. You can access that through the Pebble Time app. Uh, Android Wear is also great for notification triage. That's kind of what Android Wear is all about. It also taps into Android's extended Wear capabilities, maybe a little bit further than Pebble Time does. Uh, Android Wear is purely a notification stream, and once you dismiss things from the timeline, they disappear, as opposed to Pebble Time, where they kind of live on and you can access them after the fact. And Android Wear can run apps simply by having a supported app installed on the connected phone uh, that you have uh, syncing through Bluetooth. So that's pretty handy. Again, here it was hard to pick a winner. I, I'm not sure either way. Probably a tie, but for different reasons. Both are fully capable, but just kind of in different ways. So you have to kind of find out which one speaks to you. Voice actions. Eh, Pebble Time does allow for voice replies, but not, not full control over the device or doing other things beyond that. It doesn't tap into Google Now, that sort of thing. Whereas Android Wear is all about Google Now, and those voice actions allow you to do many, many things. Uh, I think the clear winner, as far as voice control is concerned, would be Android Wear. Now we get to battery, and this is a big one, because Pebble Time has, without a doubt, 
the best battery performance of a wearable I've ever used. It's actually pretty crazy. It's like five to seven days. The first time I, I charged it, I went six whole days uh, until I had to charge it again. I had a tough time remembering to charge it because it's you know the, the requirement isn't necessarily there uh, on a regular basis, but the charge is very fast. And when the battery dies, it still has a watch mode, a low power watch mode that it kicks into for an extra day or so. It's really cool. Android Wear, on the other hand, has battery performance that clocks in maybe a day at most. Uh, day performance means that you have a habit of charging it every night, so maybe that's a positive for you. And when the battery dies, it's done. So hands down, easily, Pebble Time is the winner here. And finally, price. Pebble Time comes in right around $200 uh, for what you see right here. If you do an upgrade to the Pebble Time Steel, which is going to release any time now, that's an extra $100 and addresses some of my complaints around design. Android Wear costs anywhere from $100 uh, for an outdated LG G watch, all the way up to like $400 plus. So the winner here, again, it's difficult to compare because you're talking old technology versus new technology and what kind of you know, money you have to buy into it. I think $200 is a pretty fair price point uh, for the Pebble Time. So pros of the Pebble Time, battery, battery, battery. I mean, the battery is just amazing. It's also very effective for notification triage and hardware controls are going to appeal to some of you. Maybe not personally to me, but I know it's going to work for some people. And cons? I think it kind of looks like a toy. Again, the Pebble Steel, uh, Pebble uh, Time Steel is going to address that a little bit uh, when it comes out. And then voice control, eh, it's kind of lacking. But overall, I'm not sure I expected this, but I would have to give the Pebble Time a buy. I thought it was really cool. The majority of what I use a wearable for is around notifications, and this was perfectly suitable for that. It was totally effective, and just the extra battery life is just super impressive, and as you get used to having that, it's really hard to go back. So uh, that is my little mini review comparison of Pebble Time versus Android Wear. My name is Jason Howell. Thank you so much for watching. You can catch me over on All About Android every week. Take care. Now, to her credit, Megan Maroney said that the Pebble Time would probably be a buy if you were an Android user. And thanks to Jason Howell, we can now confirm it. The Pebble Time, if you've got an Android device, is an absolute buy. Of course, you can find Jason Howell here on the Twit TV network. Well, everywhere. He does all about Android. He does Android App Arena. And you can also find him uh, behind the TD desk for all of Leo's shows. Oh, let's switch gears yet again. We've been talking a lot about mobile devices. We've talked a lot about accessories. But what about a device that goes inside your devices? Something that might give you a bit more power, a bit more speed, maybe a bit more expandability. Well, I took a look at uh, a series of SSDs from Kingston, and I gotta say, they're savage. The HyperX Savage 240GB bundle is Kingston's latest ultra-fast SATA Revision 3 SSD rolled into a self-contained upgrade kit for your laptop or desktop. The kit is designed to give users who don't have a PhD in computer geekology the ability to easily and quickly upgrade their computer to live in the rarefied air of the solid-state drive. Inside the box you'll find a HyperX Savage 240GB SSD, a mounting shim, a 3.5-inch adapter, a USB 3.0 enclosure, a SATA cable, mounting screws, and a screwdriver, with all the bits that you'll need to install your new drive. Kingston also includes a copy of Acronis True Copy for those who want to clone their current drives onto the SSD. The Savage is rated for 560 megabytes per second read and 520 megabytes per second write, so it'll be a performance boost for even those with a slightly older SSD, and it should blow the doors off of any computer still using a hard drive. Installation is easy for Mac or Windows users alike. If you plan on cloning your current drive, install a copy of a Cronus True image on your current OS. Then insert the HyperX Savage into the USB 3.0 enclosure and connect it to your computer. It will work with USB 2.0 ports, but it's far faster if your system supports USB 3.0. Run a Cronus True image and select the cloning option, then let the process run. Once it finishes, your computer should shut off automatically. You can now swap out your current drive with the HyperX Savage and boot into your now much faster operating system. For users who are comfortable with doing a complete restore of their systems, I suggest that you bypass the cloning process and instead install a fresh copy of the OS on your programs. Doing so tends to decrapify your operating system, getting you the best possible performance out of your new upgrade. Now it's time for the big question. How does it perform?
For our baseline, we used a 7200 RPM Seagate hard drive in an Acer Predator gaming desktop. In Crystal Disk Mark, the hard drive scored 208.4 megabytes per second read and 168.2 megabytes per second write in the sequential multi-thread test. 2.693 megabytes per second read and 2.102 megabytes per second write in the 4K multi-thread test. 205.3 megabytes per second read and 181.8 megabytes per second write in the sequential single thread test and 1.543 megabytes per second read and 2.052 megabytes per second write in the 4K single thread test. The Kingston Savage did a little bit better. In the sequential multi-thread, it scored 560.9 megabytes per second read and 537.2 megabytes per second write. In the 4K multi-thread, 305.8 megabytes per second read and 295.9 megabytes per second write. 335.3 megabytes per second read and 520.3 megabytes per second write in the sequential single thread and 22.39 megabytes per second read and 108.3 megabytes per second write in the 4K single thread. Of course, that's just a straight storage score. We use PCMark to get a composite score that weighed all the subsystems. The Predator with a Seagate hard drive scored 3,934. The exact same desktop with just the Savage swapped out for the hard drive scored 4,788. That's a 21.7% performance increase. Of course, some applications will benefit more from fast storage like the Savage. Video editors will notice a huge difference in performance, but even the casual user will enjoy decreased boot times and program load times, increased system responsiveness, and other SSD goodness. Any way you cut it, the Kingston Savage is a fantastic way to supercharge your PC. The Kingston HyperX Savage 240GB SSD is available now with a 3-year warranty. You can find them for about $125 with the upgrade kit, or $110 for the bare drive. Okay, we all know it's fast. I mean, SSDs are fast, especially if you're going to compare it to a hard drive. The question is, how do you choose your SSDs? And let me be honest with you, because the Kingston guys were honest with me. If you choose from a ma major manufacturer, that's Samsung, that's Intel, that's Kingston, you're, you're going to get pretty much the same performance. We're all bumping up against the max limit of the SATA bus. That's why they're moving over to PCIe the, or the, the M2 format, so they can get direct access to the bus. But you still want to go with a big brand. You still want to go with someone who's going to give you a product that's going to continue to work, that gives you a decent reputation to stand on. And I got to say, I'm really happy with what I experienced with the Savage SSD. Now remember, inside this kit, you get not just the SSD, not just this beautiful, yes, okay, the red is cool. It, it really kind of reminds me of Iron Man. But you're also going to get the mounting kit. That means you get everything from the universal mount to the, this is a really nice aluminum USB 3 enclosure, and even the tools to install it. So if, if you know relatively little about computers and you don't want to buy an OEM drive, Kingston will take care of you. They've got a premium product for the people who really don't want to futz around with trying to get one of these things to work. I also really like the software that they include. It is probably the easiest cloning software I've ever used. The fact that it's going to come free in every box means that I don't have to worry about what I'm going to use to get my data from one drive to the next. Now let's talk about pros and cons. The first, con the first pro has to be that it's fast. It's really fast. It's blazing fast. In fact, the only thing I have that's faster than this in my lab is the Predator. Remember, I reviewed that a while back. That's the PCIe SSD because that doesn't use the SATA bus. This thing will max out your system, period. As long as you've got a, a, a SATA Revision 3, you're going to get about 550 megabytes per second read. You're going to get about 540 megabytes per second write which is just phenomenal. The other pro is that it is fully equipped. I like the fact that they do include everything in the kit. It's not a bare drive. It will give you things that you can use. For example, if you're going to replace the hard drive in your laptop or even the SSD in your laptop with a faster one, you could take your existing drive, put it in that enclosure, and now you have a portable external drive. It's the little things like that that just make me think that Kingston has more thought out what people are going to be doing with a high-end product. On the cons, I really got nothing. I mean, this is dependable. This lasts. This is fast. It's, it's properly priced. There is nothing that will hold you back from getting a Kingston. Of course, on the other end, if you are a fan of Samsung or if you're an, a fan of Intel, you can probably find SSDs that will make you just as happy. It's just the fact that I've got sort of an attachment to the Kingston series makes me want to buy a Savage. So try, buy, don't buy. I think for me, the Kingston Savage SSD 
is a definite buy. We want to thank everyone who made this episode of Before You Buy possible. Of course, that means to Megan Maroney, to Jason Howell, to Miriam Jawar for doing our reviews. We also want to thank the people who are behind the scenes. That means Lisa and Leo. That means my super producer, Karsten Bondi, and even my TD, who this week is Zach, because, well, Cranky Hippo, he hates you. Remember to find him on uh, Twitter, twitter.com slash cranky underscore hippo, and just ask him, Hippo, why do you hate us? We, we have so much love for you. I, he, he'll love to hear from you. Also, don't forget you can find me on twitter.com slash PadreSJ, and you can find this show, this very show, at the Twit website, twit.tv slash BYB. If you go there, you'll be able to find all of our back episodes and our back uh, reviews, along with links in case you want to buy one of the products that we have reviewed. Oh, if you really, really want to be a super fan, don't forget that we do the show live every Friday at about 2.30 p.m. Pacific time, live.twit.tv. And as long as you're watching live, go ahead and jump into the chat room at irc.twit.tv. Once again, thank you very much for joining us. I'm Father Robert Ballas here. And remember, you got to watch before you buy. <laughs>